All right, recording. All right, so here in this first question, they're asking us to find the gradient. So with the gradient, and we've been given two points, so we like to label maybe the first point x1, y1, and then the next point x2, y2. Now our formula for the gradient is the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So you write down the formula and then you substitute the points in. Okay, um, so the points are, uh, so y2 for me is one, then the formula says minus, and my y1 is minus two. So make sure you don't forget to put that like that. Then we've got x2, which is five minus, which is what the formula says, and x1, which is two. And just as we mentioned before, when we have a minus and a minus, that becomes a plus. So in the end, we end up with one plus two over three, which could be simplified to three over three. So the gradient is one. All right, we've got another example of that here. Now, it doesn't matter if you, which point you call point one or point two. So even if I call this point one, it will still um, produce the same result. So let's write our formula out. Always tell the examiner what formula you're using. So in case you make a calculation error, you're explaining that you know it. So my y2 this time is five minus seven, my y1, and x2 is three. And once again, I've got a minus and a minus. So I end up with five minus seven, which will be negative two. And then it'll be three plus because We've got a minus and a minus, that's got to become a plus. So we've got three plus three, which is six. So I can simplify that to one over three because two goes into two once and two goes into six three times, all right? Okay, with question two, determine the rule for each straight line passing through the points given below. So when we see the word straight line, that means, the, and we've got to find the rule, the rule will be following that pattern of y equals mx plus c, okay? So if I go down here, they've conveniently given me the m. So at the moment, I could write that y equals 2x plus c. So what is missing is this. I don't, still don't know what the c is. So what I'm going to do is use this point. So when they give you a, a point, what they're actually giving you, they're saying when um, x is 6, y equals 2. So you can pop that into the formula. So every time you see y, you put a 2. And every time you see an x, you put a 6. And you'll see there, we now only have an equation so if I do that, 2 times 6 is 12. I have an equation here that has just one unknown, which is C. So I want to get this C by itself. So it means I'll move this over the equal sign. And when I move it over the equal sign, it does the opposite, which is minusing. Sorry, so I've run out of a bit of room. So I end up with negative 10 equals C. So now I know what C is. I can pop it back into my original formula and I have all the pieces of information now. So 2X because the gradient was 2 and minus 10. So I now have the rule for this straight line. Okay. All right. The next question, it's still a straight line because it's I'm still referring to what they said at the top. But this time we don't have anything except two points. But we do know a formula that we can use to find M. We can use our Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So I'll call that X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So that's the first thing I'm going to go do is go find out what the gradient is. So we're going to have 11 minus 8 over negative 6 minus 3. So I end up with negative 3 on negative 9. Now, don't forget if you have a negative divided by a negative, it will become a positive. So I end up with 
3 over 9 and I can simplify that to be 1 over 3 because 3 goes into 3 once and 3 goes into 9 three times. So now what I've found is m. So for the equation so far, I have y equals 1 third x plus c. So then once again, we're back to like the question part a there or question a. We don't have this guy, so we'll use one of the points to find it. Okay, so just going to pause and get some more room. All right, someone's just pointed out to me that the 11 minus 8 right here is positive 3. So that's good. So we actually will have a negative. So this, we're now up to, that's a negative a third. Okay, so good work. But now we're still missing um, the C. So once again, we're going to use a point. And it doesn't matter which point, I've just picked the first one. And I'm going to use that point to find out what C is. So this is 3 and 8. So what they tell you, when they give you a point, it means when x is 3, y equals 8. And I'm going to pop it into our so far equation, which is this, sorry, plus C. So every time I see y, I'll put an 8. And every time I see an x, I'll put a 3 plus C. So... This ends up being 3 on 3, because 3 times 1 and 3 plus C. So that's really 8 equals 1 plus C. And I want C by itself, so I move the 1 over. And sorry, it will be 8 minus 1 equals C. So now I know 7 equals C. So I can now pop that into here. So my final equation is, now you can write one third x, or we actually often write it like that. We don't have the one there, but I won't mark you wrong if you leave it as a third x. And then we've got plus seven. So there's our equation. So if you're looking at this equation, that's our c, and m is one third. So we could call that... Um, so we know that's the gradient, and this C value tells us the y-intercept. Just some other helpful hints. All right, so here, this is still continuing on with the straight line. So you're still trying to find the formula with the y equals mx. Now, they've said a gradient of negative 3, so I know that. And when they say passing through the origin, that actually tells you a point of 0, 0. And what you should also can make, um, it can be easier to know. So this is the origin here. Okay, so if you have a line passing through the origin, it doesn't really matter which way it's going, whatever. If you have a line passing through the origin, it means the y-intercept is zero. See, because it's crossing through the zero there. So that means this c value is zero so you don't really need even need to have anything written there so when they ask me for the formula these ones are nice and easy because it's just negative 3x so I just have to put the m I don't need to put plus zero if we have plus zero we don't need that so we just take it away and there's our formula for that line okay so then <clears throat> this next one so we're still following the straight line pattern so y equals mx plus c. Now they've told me m here and what they've actually told me here is actually a point. If they tell me the x-intercept, what do we know about the x-intercept? What's a fact that you know? What does y equal at the x-intercept? Uh, yeah, good. y equals zero. So that means when they tell you the x-intercept, you actually have a point. You can use 4 and 0. So then if I go to do this equation, I can do like what we were doing before. I'm going to call it negative 1x plus c. So I don't know what c is, so I'm going to use this point. So I use this point that they've given me. So it's 4 and 0. So what they're saying when x equals 4, y equals 0. So I pop that into my formula. 
So 0 equals negative 1 times 4 plus c. So I get 0 equals negative 4 plus c. I'm going to move the 4 over an equal sign. And then I get positive 4 equals c. So now I can pop that in here. And I now know that my final equation will be y equals. Now I can write negative x or I can write negative 1x. It doesn't matter. Okay. And then plus 4. And there's our equation. All right, with this one, using the gradient method, sketch the following. So with the gradient method, what you actually do is you first look for the y-intercept. So here is the y-intercept. that Because this is, remember when we say when it's written like this, this value here is the y-intercept. Okay, so when you're doing the gradient method way of sketching you obviously draw your little set of axes here and the first the first point that you pop on your graph is your y-intercept so i'm going to say it's down here here's negative one so there's the y-intercept so there's the point then what you're going to do is you're going to use the gradient. So the gradient here, M, so the gradient equals 3. Now, if it's not a fraction, make it a fraction because it makes it easier. So it's not a fraction, so I'll make it a fraction by just putting it over 1 because that means the same thing. And what we're going to do, this is going to be our rise and this is going to be our run because that's another way of interpreting the gradient or you can call it rise over run so what you're going to do is from your y-intercept you're going to go up a rise of three so if you go here's one two three so i'd actually be on number two wouldn't i yeah so i've gone up a rise of three rise of three okay then would they want me to go over a run of one so if i do that and i move over a run of one so what i've moved over one on here i get to this point here okay so the coordinate of that point is actually one and two once you have two points for a um once you have two points you can always sketch the graph, sorry. So now I've got those two points, I line them up with the ruler, sorry, and draw a line through there. And there we've done our, sketched our graph. When we were gonna tidy it up, you'd have y, x, negative x, and negative y. And sometimes we also should write the equation on the line, so I'll just write that, 3x, minus one. So that's what you really need. You need these points. So I might write those points in there too, show the examiner that I know what I'm talking about. You don't need the little rise and run arrows. I'm just showing you that. All right. All right. So here we go again. We're still getting asked to sketch this graph using the gradient intercept method. So we're going to practice it again. So this time I'm going, so I draw my little set of axes. You can see all, you, you have to use a ruler just mainly for these this part here. You don't have to like measure out all your set points and things. You just have to be in the rough area. So this part, you rule out your little axes and then off we go. All right, so I know that this part here is the y-intercept. So I'm gonna go pop that on the graph and it's positive five, so I'll just go here. I'm just, it doesn't really matter. Oh, actually, I might just go a bit higher. Um, so I'm just gonna put it up here. It doesn't matter what you've done. I'm gonna say that's five. That's where, that's gonna be my, sorry. That's gonna be my five, and this is the point, the y-intercept. All right, so now if we look at the gradient, the gradient is two. And remember I said if it's not a fraction, make it. So I've made it over one. Now, so this is going to be my rise 
and this will be my run. Now, when it's a negative, it means you go downwards. So a negative of rise of two. So it means I'm going down, say one, two. And I would be, if I went down two, I'd be at three. Okay, so that's where I am at the moment. And then I'm gonna go across a run of one. So I'm just gonna say that's one. So really my next, my other point, oops, sorry. Get out of there. My other point that I've found, this point here, is actually one, three. Yeah, the X is one and the Y is three. So then you just get your ruler and you join your two dots up and you draw your line like that and we write the equation y equals negative 2x plus 5. Okay, done. Okay, with this one they're asking using the x and y intercept method sketch the following. So with the x and y intercept method you've got to find out what they are then you, you mark them on the axes and then you just draw, join the dots. So the x intercept we always know the fact that y equals zero. So into this, this formula here, every time I see y, I'll put a zero. And then I'm gonna keep rearranging it until I get x by itself. So I'd move the six over. So it'd become negative six equals four x. Then I'm gonna move this four over. And because it's multiplying, it divides. And then I can simplify that fraction because 2 goes into that 3 times and 2 goes into that 2. So I can say it's negative 3 on 2 equals x. So that's the x intercept. Okay, and then I'm going to find the y intercept doing the same way but I let x equal 0. So I've got y equals 4 times 0 plus 6. So y equals 6. So you can see it still worked and we should have known anyway. That's in that's in that oops. That's in that what oh, go away. Um y equals mx plus c format. So I could read the y intercept off straight away. All right, but I just did it the way I did it. Okay, so we get our ruler up. Sorry. Just sketch a uh, little set of axes here okay you have to use a ruler in VC exams too they won't give you the points unless it's done with a ruler so um, make sure you're doing that okay so I'm gonna plot those two intercepts now the x intercept is negative 3 on 2 just make sure you're in the negative area of x so I'll just write that's negative 3 on 2 and y is 6 it doesn't matter if you're, a, you know, a little, oh, not to scale as long as you're in the right area. And then I just get the two, those two points and join them up. And there you go. I've sketched that graph. All right. Okay, so we're going to do this one using sketching the X and Y intercepts. Sorry. So once again, X intercept, it's the, I know that Y equals zero. So into this formula... Every time I see y, I put a 0. So I end up with 2x equals 10. So x equals 10 divided by 2 and x equals 5. So this is the x-intercept. Then I go and find the y-intercept doing the opposite. So y-intercept, every time I see x, I'll put 0. So I end up with 4y equals 10 y equals 10 over 4. I can simplify that because 2 goes into 10 5 times and 2 goes into 4 2 times. So y equals 5 on 2. Bring this ruler down. Um, draw my set of axes like that. And then I'm going to mark the point. So x is 5. That'll do. I mean, and y is 5 over 2, it's a positive number, so I just put it up here. I've got, um, oh, I can't get the ruler. There we go, sorry. Um, and then I just join the dots up, or turn, join the two intercepts up. 
sensitive there you go and I'm missing y x negative x negative y and done okay so with this one they've asked us to sketch them on the same set of axes so I'm just gonna draw my set of axes here and so th that's these parts are the parts that need to be ruled so you've done that then I'm going to do this first one x equals 5 um, in in the purple color so x equals 5 it would make sure I'm out here I'm just going to say that's 5 there on the x-axis x equals 5 is a vertical line like that okay so that's an x equals oops sorry um, x equals 5 okay now when you have ones like this the y equals 4x so even if you have y equals 4x that one it's going it would be normally it's like plus zero so it's going through this origin now because this is a positive gradient you know it will go it will be going uphill like from left to right that's a positive gradient so you can just quickly sketch it like that so y equals 4x I'm just going to add a few others on there just so you know um, so what about if I had y equals negative 2 so if I have a y equals negative 2 you go down to say negative 2 here and a y equals um, graph is just a horizontal one like that so that one looks like that okay just to help you out and then just to do one more if I had sort of like this one up here if I had y equals negative 5x so it's still going through the origin that one but it's got a negative gradient so I'll see it going downhill so you might see it like that so that's a quick way of sketching those ones all right state the gradient and the y-intercept of the following lines well you know when we have it written like this y equals mx plus c that the number in front of x is the gradient so that's the gradient and the number by itself is the y-intercept okay so pretty easy here the gradient equals 3 the y-intercept is positive 7 okay now be careful this is not in we in the gradient intercept form meaning it's not looking like this we need to make it look like this where we only have one y so what I'm going to do is rearrange this equation here so it's just one y so for me to do that I'm going to have to move this 2 over an equal sign and if that 2 is multiplying it's going to divide everything by 2 on the other side so you can write it can be written like that or that could be written like 6x over 2 plus 10 over 2 so if you think about it we could simplify that to be um, 6 divided by 2 is the same as 3 so 3x and 10 divided by 2 is 5 now that I've done that I can read off the oh sorry wrong one I can read off the gradient and the y-intercept now so I can simply say all right the gradient is 3 and the y-intercept equals 5 okay this last one so you gotta sorry this C one here if we think about this one as a graph just remember that this is y equals negative 8 that would be a straight line down like this so when you have a horizontal line like that the gradient equals zero so you might it has a zero gradient and the y-intercept is actually what the line is it's crossing only at negative eight okay so that's that one and then if we think about this last one d if x equals two that would be x equals two when you have a gradient uh, a vertical line the gradient isn't called undefined 
okay so just you just have to write undefined and then the y intercept is actually there is no y intercept so you can just say um you have to say no y intercept okay because it doesn't cross don't write zero because it's not crossing through zero just write no y intercept okay all right so here it says determine the coordinates of the midpoint of the line joining so remember we can find x at the midpoint is found by going x1 plus x2 over 2 and y at the midpoint is found by going y1 plus y2 over 2 okay so sorry i'm going to do this one first so here's like my x1 y1 x2 y2 so x at the midpoint for this one would be 2 plus 6 divided by 2 so that's 8 over 2 so it's 4 and y at the midpoint would be 5 plus 1 over 2 which is 6 over 2 which is 3 so the midpoint if you're asked to write the coordinates of the midpoint the x is 4 and the y is see x and y is 3 okay so the midpoint between these two dots between a and b was that okay the next one we do the same thing but I'm gonna do it down here so x at the midpoint I'll call this x1 y1 x2 y2 x at the midpoint would be x1 plus x2 over 2 so that's 2 over 2 equals 1 um, y at the midpoint will be y1 which is 6 plus y2 which is 6 over 2 12 over 2 equals 6 so the midpoint between those the midpoint between c and d is 1 and 6 this is the this is the x this is the y all right okay so with this one it's still finding the midpoint so we're still using um, the formula that x at the midpoint is x1 plus x2 over 2 and we know that y at the midpoint is y1 plus y2 over 2 so it's the midpoint of the two points so here is our two points a and b so I'll call a x1 y1 and sorry and m x2 y2 so the x at the midpoint will be 0 plus 2 over 2 which is 2 over 2 which equals 1 and y at the midpoint will be 0 plus 3 over 2 which equals 3 over 2 just leave it as a fraction doesn't matter so the midpoint for this one is um sorry one and three over two okay okay we didn't i didn't put one in but what if we wanted to find the distance between um point a and m let's practice that so we know that the distance is found by this formula where we say um x2 minus x1 squared plus x oh sorry plus y2 sorry y2 minus y1 squared okay so we're still using these points at x and y and 2 so i'll pop them into the formula just as i see it so y2 is 2 minus 0 squared and then y is 3 minus 0 squared so just take your time and do step by step so 2 minus 2 minus 0 is 2 so I end up with 2 squared and 3 minus 0 is 3 so 3 squared okay and then I just simply do that which would be 4 plus 9 and then I end up with the square root of 13 and that's the distance and if unless you can't do it's not a perfect square root 
just leave it like that. So that would be, I would say, distance between um, A and M is square root 13. Okay, just to practice that because I know you have them too. Okay, this last one is a more practical application. So a pizza shop charges a delivery of $2.50 and $8 for each pizza. So when you see this, um, a word like for or even the word per um, something, you know that is that should be a trigger for you to know that that's, they're talking about the gradient. So when you like, so it's eight dollars fifty per pizza. That's a gradient. They're mentioning a gradient there. So you might like, all right. So m equals eight fifty. Now, when you have a one-off fee, that's like the y-intercept or a constant. Doesn't matter what you do, you have to pay that. That's like the y-intercept there. So that's like the c value. So if I was um, writing the rule. If I just was using y equals mx plus c, I'd have y equals 8.5x plus $2.50. Now, we don't, in practical applications, we're going to stop using y and x. We're going to use different things. And they want me to say the cost of the pizza. So y has become c. And the amount of pizzas ordered is p. So I can just say cost, maybe in dollars, equals 8.5 times P plus 2.5. Okay, so there's the formula. They said draw this on a, um, draw this graph. So once again, you just really don't need to overdo it. You just have to pretty much sketch it. So as I said, you always just draw your two lines. Your axes up. You know the y-intercept's two fifty, and you know that this is a positive gradient, so it'd be going up. So you probably could just um, draw your graph like this. Now you would never, when you're thinking about sorry, when you're thinking about this graph, this is cost and this is pizzas. You don't ever. If you think about it we're not going to have negative amounts of pizzas so this is where we start removing that bit and we're not going to have negative cost because they're not going to sell you pizzas unless you give have the money so we end up with a graph like this so really zero pizzas is going to be the most you ever have so we should really draw our line like that out from there so it's a positive gradient and as you get more we also too um, say this was a point here when we get a bit later next year in further up in methods and that we really should leave this point open like that because no one's going to pay a delivery fee for no pizzas so that this shows us that that's what happens when it's zero but it's never really happening and it off goes off like that um, that's so there's drawing the graph uh, we might also on our graph put that that's money as well. Okay, now it says if Pippo bought 10 pizzas, what is his total cost? So I can just use my cost formula and 8.5 and I just times it by 10 plus 2.5. So that's pretty easy. So you've got $85 so plus the $2, so $87.50. So what's the total cost? you might just write $87.50 out as a separate answer. Okay. Um, if Mary spent, now we've got to remember this is our cost formula because I've changed pages. So it was 8.50 pizzas plus 2.50 delivery fee. Okay, so they ask us if Mary spent um, 189 on her order, how many pizzas did she receive? So this is giving you a cost. So if you pop that into the formula, equals 8.50p plus 2.50, the amount of how many pizzas is the question. So that p is becoming the question. So what you're gonna do is solve your equations like you normally do. So first I'd move that over, so 189.50, 
minus two dollars fifty equals eight point five oh pizzas. So we end up with um eighty seven dollars equals eight point five oh p. Now this is times in here, move it over, it will divide. So we get eighty seven dollars divided by eight dollars fifty. And if you do that, okay, so I think they might have incorrectly did some numbers here. We end up with 10 point um, two something pizzas. So really we're gonna say 10 pizzas. There's a bit of extra cost in there. So maybe someone put some extra toppings on um, because that's why, because um, if you do 10, 10 times 8.5, actually $85 so we can say there was um, two dollars of extra toppings done on there on her order for her pizzas there you go done okay this last one the number of publications in a library increased steadily with time um, after 10 years there were uh, 7,200 publications in the library and after 12 years there were 8,000 publications so what they're doing is they're setting up this is a linear um, equation pattern except that my y is uh, is the number of books and my x is the time so if you look what they've actually given you here is they've actually given you oh, sorry two points so here's one point they said when it's 10 it's 7 2 0 oh, oh. see that would be an x and that would be a y and then they gave me another one here they said when it was 12 it was 8000 so i end up with another set of coordinates so determine the rule for the number of publications in the library so we need to find the gradient and you can just use your method of m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I could do 8,000 minus 7,200 over um, 8 minus, sorry, this was 12 years, sorry, so 12 minus eight no oh gosh sorry sorry 12 minus 10 okay so i end up with 800 over two which is 400 so that's my gradient so i know that at the moment n equals 400 t plus c so we need to find c so i'm just going to use a point again 10 and 7,200. 7, so when the publications are 200, we have 10 plus C. So we end up with equals 4,000. Bring that over. We've got 7,200 minus 4,000 equals C. 3,000. 200 equals c so sorry i'm running out of room so the final answer for this would be n because we're not using y the gradient was 400 t because we're not using x plus 3200 all right so how many publications were there after five years so this is like t equals 5.5 so i use my formula n equals 400 times 5.5 plus 3,200 and we'll get an answer 5,400 and how many publications will there be after 25 years so once again just popping that into the calculate uh, the sorry the formula and you can when you have these ones you, you will be allowed a calculator so you can use them so it ends up being 13,200 um, publications.